I'm going to go over why this is the most difficult, commonly played song in jazz. Forget Giant Steps, forget Countdown. People don't call those songs nearly as much as they call this one. And even still, there is nowhere to hide on this song. So before we get into that, I want to go over an even simpler song because it directly relates to the problem. That song is Satin Doll. A really easy song. Or is it? Okay, I want to pinpoint one problem that we have with jazz notation that's going to wind up causing you a lot of problems. So if we take a look at Satin Doll, let's take a look at the first few bars. We basically just have D minor in the key of C, D minor 7, G7, D minor 7, G7, E minor 7, A7, E minor 7, A7. Now, on paper, it looks like 2 5 2 5, 3 6 3 6. But it is in fact not. What we should be looking at is 2 5 2 5. Key change, 2 5 2 5. But in jazz, we do not notate all these key changes. It would make the music just look absolutely ridiculous because these key changes happen all the time. Now, when we usually look at something like rhythm changes, we're thinking about three, six, two, five in the key of C, for example, and how those chords relate to the key of C. But with something like Satin Doll, when we have that key change, that three, six that we were calling it does not relate to the original key. All right, that same thing applies to Girl from Ipanema. Now, I'm talking about the most difficult part of the song, which is that middle section. That's, man, people just absolutely crash and burn on that thing. There is nowhere to hide. And I just gave you a clue as to how we can figure out how to play this song correctly when we're soloing over it. Now, at the end of this video, I'm gonna go over the A sections and you'll be able to play through this whole song. Whenever I think of playing this song, in any key other than F, because I've just got it in F now, I'm only thinking of the target chord. I call it the target chord. If you're in the key of C, it's an A7. If you're in the key of F, it's a D7. That is the six degree dominant seven, and it's mixolydian. All right, I'm gonna get to why that's mixolydian in a second. So in the key of C, I'm just automatically thinking A7. If you're in the key of D flat, I'm automatically just thinking B flat seven, mixolydian. Now the natural tendency for any mixolydian chord, dominant seven chord, is to resolve up a perfect fourth because the middle part of this song is actually modulating to the two chord. And that target chord, the dominant seven that precedes it, is the most logical way to get there. Now, I like to think of this song modulating to the two chord because the chord after that relates to the two chord. So if we were in the key of C, we have our A7, which goes to the D minor, that's Dorian minor. And then after the Dorian minor, we have a B flat seven. That B flat seven, I like to think about it as the flat six because we're now in D minor. Okay, so if you just think about it, you just got A7, B flat seven, which are right next to each other, and then that D, which is very logical where the song is modulating to anyway. But we're gonna use a B flat seven Lydian. All right, so this is your Lydian dominant because that is what relates to the key of D minor. If you're doing this in the key of C. If you're doing this in the key of F, you have your D7 to a G minor, Dorian minor, and then an E flat seven sharp 11. If you're doing this in D flat, same basic idea, target chord B flat seven resolves up to an E flat minor, your flat six, B seven sharp 11. All right, so for me, I only think of one chord, which is the target chord, that six dominant. It's very easy for me to walk my way from that chord, resolving it up a perfect fourth, going down to that flat six, 
in relationship to the minor chord. It's, it's very easy. My practice routines involve me doing that because walking your way through this thing is how we get around the other part of that middle section. So let's get to that. Okay, so let's think about this like it's in the key of F. Most people do this in the key of F unless they have a vocalist who will probably do it in D flat. Let's do this in F for right now. I know that the middle section goes up a half step. So we go from F major seven to F sharp. I'm gonna say F sharp instead of G flat to F sharp major seven. That's easy. That's a really simple practice routine. Practice playing an F, practice playing an F sharp major. The next chord is a B7, and then the next chord after that is an F sharp minor seven. So if we get to the B7, if I spell that out, starting on an F sharp, take a look at what happens here. Exactly. It's just an F sharp minor seven. So instead of thinking of all these different chords and whatnot, all you gotta do is just think, okay, I'm in the key of F, I play F sharp major for two bars, I play F sharp Dorian minor for four bars, and then bang, we get to our target chord, which is the D7. And I know how to walk my way around that D7 from there, I just go to D7, I go to G Dorian minor, E flat seven sharp 11 from there. So if I'm doing this in the key of C, it's really, really easy for me to transpose this now. And remember, I'm going to tell you this. Don't write this stuff down. If you write it down, you're going to force your brain to try to remember what was written on the page. And you don't want to do that. You want the song to remind you of what it is in case you forget it. Instead of trying to think, oh man, I was doing it in C before. Okay, I got to go up a sixth. Forget all of that. By the time you do that, the song's over. Gig's over. You missed it. Okay, so let's do this in the key of C. Let's say I'm in the key of C and I get to that middle section. I know it goes to D flat major for two bars, D flat Dorian minor for four bars. And then I got my target chord. What was my target chord in the key of C? A7. I know I can easily walk my way around that from A7. I just go to A7 to a D Dorian minor and B flat seven like I'm still in D minor, which is a B flat seven sharp 11. It's easy. It's really easy to think about it this way. All right, so if I'm gonna do this in a key of concert B flat, as a tenor player, I'm like, ooh, nobody does this in B flat, so I'm in the key of C, obviously. <laughs> Six two five one right there, which is your wow. Uh, okay, ladies and gentlemen. So let's get to the last part of that middle section, which is the three six two five back into the original key. Which let's assume that it's F for this example. So we wind up with an A minor seven, D seven flat nine. G minor seven, C seven, flat nine, as it's notated in the real book. Now, in reality, it's an A minor seven, which is Phrygian, because we're in the key of F now, to a D seven sharp 11, flat nine. Then we have G Dorian minor going to a C seven sharp 11, flat nine. And again, on that dominant seven chord, we have the sharp 11 in the melody with the flat nine that's in the chords. It's not notated the sharp 11, but again, coming back to knowing what something is when it's not notated is a big thing with being able to figure out what you're supposed to do. So I'm gonna give you a fantastically simplistic way of negotiating your way around this altered dominant chord. Now, normally with a Lydian dominant chord, you just take a dominant seven, you go to the fourth degree, you raise it a half step. But now we have a flat nine. So I'm gonna show you what you can do over this chord. I don't generally prefer to do it this way, but it is very, very efficient 
getting us familiar through those dominant seven chords. It's just quite simply a diminished scale. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so let's go over the last part, which is actually the first part of the song, which are the A sections of this song. So that way we know what to do when we're playing this entire song. Let's go tackle the easy part. <laughs> okay, so just like I said with Satin Doll, we have that key change that should be noted there, but it's not. We have the exact same kind of thing with the beginning of this song, because let's say we're in the key of D flat. We got D flat major for two bars. Then it goes to an E flat seven for two bars. So when we get to that E flat seven, we should actually have a key signature change right there. If we were in the key of C, we would have C for two bars and then we'd go to a D seven. And we should have a key signature change right there. That's why when we get to the E flat seven, if we're in D flat, we need to use Mixolydian. Okay, how do we know whether to use Mixolydian or Dorian or Phrygian? Mostly the melody will tell us that. If the notes of the melody are matching Mixolydian, we are using Mixolydian. If it's matching Dorian or Phrygian, whatever, that's how we know first and foremost. That's what the composer had in mind when they wrote it. When it's not there, it is ambiguous and we do actually have flexibility. All right, so first and foremost, melody is telling us which modes to use. And then we look out for these types of key changes. And that's just standard music theory right there. Okay, let's get back to this thing. When we get to, let's say we're in the key of C, and we're doing this when we go to the D7, it is your D mixolydian dominant. After those two bars, we could put another key change there back to C. So then we go to what is basically a 2 5 1. All right, so in the key of let's go back to D flat, let's say we have an E flat minor 7 to an A flat 7, but it doesn't go to A flat 7, it goes to a D7. And we call that a tritone substitution. So I want to show you guys something that's really cool about the sharp 11 flat 9 chord that we talked about earlier and how it relates to what's on that tritone sub in the A sections. Take a look at this. So we have the C, E, G, B flat. That's the 1, 3, 5, and the flat 7 spelling out a C7 chord. So if we take a look at this from an F sharp point of view, now we have the C, which is the sharp 11, the E is the flat seven, the G is the flat nine, and the B flat or A sharp is the third. So just swapping the tritone in the bass gives us our sharp 11, flat nine, dominant seven chord. So what do we play over that? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so let's take a look at that C7. As you can see, we just have our standard C mixolydian scale. And then when we go to the F sharp seven with all the bells and whistles, you can see all we did was just take the F and make it an F sharp. From an F sharp point of view, you wind up with an F sharp seven that has a flat 13, a sharp 11, a sharp nine, and a flat nine in it. Another way to look at this is what you may run across is something called an Ionian sharp one. I hate calling it this, but it's really easy to see why someone would. When we get to the F sharp seven altered, you can see all it is is an F major scale, but with an F sharp instead of an F natural. I mean, that's a really 
that's probably the simplest way to think about it, but I hate thinking about altering the one in any capacity whatsoever. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so if you like this kind of stuff, I'll do more of this kind of stuff. So thanks for tuning in. See ya.